get started. Good morning once again to all of our guests, aka taste testers. Welcome to our last taste of transportation lunch series focusing on TPA areas. I am Paul Chance, the public involvement officer for the Miami Dade Transportation Pub Planning Organization, also known as the TPO. And I am also known as Host Chance. We have come to our seventh and last edition of the Taste of Transportation Lunch Series. If you enjoyed us in the past, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. There we go. Welcome back. This lunch series will even be more appetizing than the last six. And well, well, host chance, what about those who have missed the last six lunch series? Well, let's take a look at our taste of transportation lunch special menu to whet our appetite. We have successfully completed six TPA lunch episodes with 19 different transportation partners, AKA transportation chefs, capturing over 30 different topics while mentioning 33 smart plan demonstration projects covering 34 municipalities and the unincorporated areas within Miami-Dade County, AKA OMSA. We have had over 200 attendees as taste testers and a total of 700 views on the TPO YouTube channel. Wow, 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 wow. Are these numbers blowing you away, TPO Master Chef? I think you're gonna have to catch me because these numbers are blowing me away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> so, it's great to unveil these numbers to everyone, but there is one thing that we have not unveiled that people keep asking me about everywhere I go. They ask me, who is the TPO master chef? Well, today is the day we unveil our very own TPO Master Chef. Are you ready to see our TPO Master Chef? We will do the unveiling at the end of the show. But shh, don't tell the TPO Master Chef. I heard you, host Chance. I heard you. <laughs> Look, moving right along, we hope. You have enjoyed our virtual Taste of Transportation Lunch Series. It's been yummy, yummy for the tummy, tummy. This series has given us the opportunity to connect with you and inform you about transportation-related projects and programs in the seven different TPA areas. Once again, we have invited our sister agencies, transportation agencies, to talk about their latest projects, programs, and resources in TPA 7, which feature the city of Miami. But before we get started, are you ready for the unveiling of the TPO Master Chef? Oh, no, Host Chance. There oh. will be no unveiling right now. They have to wait until the end of the show. Oh. We'll just talk about what the TPO is cooking. Oh, yeah. Get ready, get ready, get ready. All of our taste testers to smell what the TPO is cooking. I'd like to share with you what we have been cooking up at the Miami Dade TPO with our smart demonstration projects, creating the first and last mile opportunities in TPA 6. I mean, TPA 7. <laughs> if you Look at the top of the map moving down. There are several smart plan demonstration on demand projects serving, servicing the TPA 7 area. We have the North Bay Village Express, Liberty City Trolley, Miami Beach Burt, 
the village of El Portal Express, Miami Midtown train station, and the Civic Center Metro Rail Station area on demand service. Now that you have had a taste of the TPO smart plan demonstration projects in TPA 7, let's get ready for the main course. Each partner will provide you with a small taste of what's on their menu for two to three minutes. We will then open the floor for one to two appropriate questions about their item or fixings. If you have any questions or comments, use the question feature on your panel. Please include your email address so we can respond to you with the respond to you with the reply from the appropriate agency. And now, without further ado, our first transportation partner representing the Port Miami, the Gateway to Americas, Rashad. Good morning, Rashad, and welcome to uh, your first taste of transportation. What would you like to place on the TPO lunch menu today? All, All right. right. At Port Miami, uh, we're currently offering a pop up vaccination site for uh, COVID 19. No appointment required. It's at Cruise Terminal J. It's open to the public Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Next slide, please. What we're looking at right here are cargo statistics over the last six years. Uh, when we're talking about current statistics, uh, as of April fiscal year 2021, Port Miami has already outperformed uh, a fiscal year 2020 by 19.36% with the, with the gain of 13,915 TEUs. Uh, TEUs are 20 foot equivalent units, uh, which one container, which you normally see at Port Miami, is two TU TEU, which is a 40 foot container. We do have some of the 20 foot, but we normally do the, the um, 40 foot containers. The highest performance for uh, uh, April was back in 2015, where we had 93,391 TEUs. So this year, uh, for the month of April, we fell short of breaking the record by 7,602 uh, TEUs. Next slide, please. So when you wonder where your, your clothes, your medicine, and furniture and items are co coming from, here's a list of our trading partners. Our top trading partner is China at 184,000, with uh, the second coming in at Honduras with 59,000. So as you can see, China actually we uh, uh, is one of our uh, uh, best trading partners, so they actually triple uh, our number two, which is Honduras, with last coming at Nicaragua uh, with 17,000. Next slide, please. So here is a list of uh, some uh, current and upcoming projects at Port Miami. If you look to the bottom left-hand corner, you have Terminal F expansion uh, phase two uh, to be completed by the fall of 2022. Thank you. And Shore Power, uh, which is big on uh, Mayor Carver's list, uh, to be completed by fall of 2020, 2023, with Terminal V, Virgin Voyages, fall of 2021. So we have projects uh, that are to be completed this year, all the way out to where you see bulkhead expansion, births one through six, to be completed by the summer of 2028. Next slide, please. So here's a list of uh, some uh, news developments at Port Miami. On January 12th, Miami-Dade County welcomed Sir Richard Branson's cruise line, Virgin Voyages, with the groundbreaking of a new lush tropical terminal V. And also on January 29th, Miami-Dade County celebrated the expansion of Carnival Cruise Line at Port Miami. This is Carnival's third terminal at Port Miami and the largest in South Florida. Next slide, please. Hey. When you talk about Port Miami, you're talking about the cruise capital of the world. Here is, is uh, basically a cruise passenger list of statistics over the last six years. As you can see from 2015 all the way to 2019 or 2020, it was record breaking. And if you can see, we stopped cruising in, in March or April of 2020, and we were halfway to meeting our 2019 mark with only cruising three, four months uh, uh, in 2020. 
So 2020 was also looking to be a record breaking year before the pandemic. But we, we know with uh, everything getting ready to open back up, uh, Miami-Dade County and Port Miami will continue to re remain the cruise capital. Next slide, please. And because Miami-Dade County is the cruise capital of the world and many of our passengers come through Miami International Airport, we're now creating a partnership which is going to be our customer relations program where we will welcome and assist cruise passengers to and from MIA to Port Miami. We'll provide professional courteous images to travelers and we'll work with Miami International Airport and cruise line partners to provide passengers and visitors with seamless transfer from the airport to the seaport. We want to promote customer service and instill consumer confidence. We want to ensure that we remain the cruise capital and we want to ensure that everyone that travels to Miami-Dade County through Miami International Airport to Port Miami is treated and feels that they, they're, well, uh, they're coming to Miami-Dade County and they're part of a, a, our family. So next slide. Thank you for taking the time to hear about uh, things going on in Port Miami. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to send me an email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rashad, that was great information. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. This has been awesome information for thank us. You. Thank you so much. And now we'll be moving on to our next transportation park. So I know the chef. TPO Chef is getting ready. She's in the kitchen, getting ready for her debut. But Rashad, we're gonna move on to our next economic engine, economic engine sister agency. Our next transportation partner representing the Miami-Dade Aviation Department. Mark, good morning. Mark, thanks for flying in today. For our last lunch series focusing on TPA seven, what would you like to place on the menu today? Well, first I want to want to say, what were you going to feed me? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and I trust all of you on this go to webinar meeting are well and safe. I am Mark Henderson, Community Relations Coordinator and Media Relations for Miami International Airport, and a system of General Aviation Airports located throughout Miami-Dade County. When we first started these webinar meetings, I talked about what MIA was doing to keep its visitors and employees safe during the pandemic. We continue to have signage throughout the airport, reminding travelers to wear a mask, maintain social distancing, and wash their hands frequently. In addition, plexiglass shields remain in front of busy areas like, a, like at ticket counters, queuing lines, and TSA checkpoints. Our aggressive measures have made MIA the first airport in Florida and the second in the United States to be accredited under the Airport Council's International Airport Health Accreditation Program. Also, when you enter our airport, you must still wear a mask. In January, the CDC issued a federal order requiring mask wearing that applies to all transportation hubs such as airports and train stations and that supersedes any local orders. In our ongoing effort to keep our employees and our visitors safe from COVID, MIA has now two pop-up vaccination sites through Friday with the Pfizer vaccine. They are located at Concourse D Auditorium on the fourth floor and a drive through location at 75 Bus Road, which is near the airport uh, taxi lot. Vaccinations will also be available June 1st through June 4th, and also on June 7th. The two locations will be open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Vaccinations are available to airport staff and eligible individuals 18 years of age or older who live or work in Florida. Eligible minors and minors 16 and 17 years of age may receive the vaccination, but must be accompanied by a parent or a guardian. Pre-COVID-19, the numbers of passengers coming through are coming to uh, MIA was about 110,000 on weekends and between 120 and 135,000 on weekends, weekday, excuse me, for the uh, 110. That number dropped as low as 4,000 last April. As of last week, the airport once again is seeing between 80,000 and 90,000 passengers on weekdays and more than 100,000 on weekends. New and long-term airlines at Miami 
have helped to contribute to the increase. In November of last year, Southwest Airlines began service at MIA, flying to Baltimore, Washington, Chicago, Midway, Denver, Houston, Hobby, Nashville, and Tampa. Then in March, the airline added a daily service to Atlanta and Dallas Love Field. Then in February, JetBlue followed Southwest by beginning service at MIA with service to Boston, New York, JFK, Newark, and Los Angeles. Both Southwest and JetBlue have had strong presence at Fort Lauderdale International Airport and are now expanding at MIA. Other airlines that have increased their presence at MIA include Frontier and Miami's top carrier, American Airlines. With passenger traffic increasing, we continue to roll new initiatives to enhance the travel experience at MIA. As of last week, travelers who use electronic wheelchairs now have 10 locations throughout the airport to charge up their chairs. The charging stations are in each airport concourse post security and at D and J international greeter areas pre-security. Miami International Airport is one of the first airports in the nation to offer this service. MIA is poised to continue its climb back from the struggles of 2020. As international travel grows and the cruise lines start sailing again, MIA should see its passenger numbers increase even more. I wish you a safe and well day, and remember to fly safe and fly smart. Thank you so much, Mark. That was great information. Once again, you always come with uh, great stuff and great information. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining us uh, with great information. And I want to let you know, fly safe, fly smart. Thank you for joining us. You're most welcome. <laughs> All right. I know that TPO Master Chef is still in the, in the dressing room. And I know we can't wait for the unveiling. We just can't wait. So we're going to go on to our next transportation partner from the Citizens Independent Transportation Trust. Good morning, Carla, and congratulations, as this is your seventh straight event with us. Whoop, 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 whoop. Thank you, <laughs> whoop, Mr. Chef. Master Chef Chance, and um, good morning, everyone. And again, thank you to the TPO for this opportunity. We, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, being able to share our information. Next slide, please. So as Master Chef mentioned, um, you know, with the People's Transportation Plan, the half cent surtax, there is funding many projects that are moving transportation forward in our county. And approximately 23% of the surtax funds are going to municipalities that are eligible to receive funds to do improvements within their municipalities. That could be transit services, uh, also public works services uh, or public works projects. And one of them is the city of Miami. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Next slide, please. So within the city of Miami, um, unfortunately due to the pandemic in March 20th, uh, they had to uh, suspend their service temporarily or reduce it. Um, but on June 30th, they restored their service uh, and are running regular service now uh, except for on um, the Overtown and Liberty City, which is still a little bit of reduced service. So they implement the safety features um, and are doing everything that they can to keep everyone safe. Uh, and they're also adding new trolley. They have ordered three new trolleys that are expected to be arriving at the end of July. So that's going to be a great improvement for um, City of Miami trolley service. And if you want more information on this schedule, uh, it is listed um, on the, the website that is listed there. Next slide, please. Also, City of Miami is uh, using its surtax funds to do improvements on roadways. It's uh, do on the Silver Bluff area. It's doing crab, uh, traffic calming improvements. Uh, and that project is very well underway. It is about 75% completed. And on uh, Southwest 22nd Terrace, they're also doing other roadway improvement projects, other roadway improvement um, improvements, and that one is about 90% uh, completed currently. Next slide, please. So along with giving you information about what City of Miami is doing to improve their service, I also wanted to tell a little bit about what we do uh, to try to help improve what we're doing with you know, monitoring the surtax funds. And we are uh, the Transportation Trust, it's a 15-member volunteer body 
of created to oversee how the surtax funds are invested within Miami-Dade County. And we are looking for people who want to get involved also in the trust. We're currently accepting applications. So if you're interested, please go to our website at www.miamidade.gov forward slash CITT and click on the member recruitment tab where you can download an application and get more information. Also, you can call us at 305-375-1357. Next slide, please. And we also want to welcome you to please, please connect with us on uh, Facebook. We're on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram on Facebook. You can look at us, uh, look us up at Citizens Independent Transportation Trust. You can follow us on Twitter at GoCITT and on Instagram at Transportation Trust. Also, for more information on us, you can visit our website at www.mamidate.gov forward slash CITT. Next slide, please. And with that, I want to conclude our presentation and tell you thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you, Carla. Thank you so much for just being an anchor. And thank you for just being a part of the program seven straight times. Wow. Yes, thank, thank you. you so you're, no, you're a veteran now, so you already know what's about <laughs> Let's hear from our TPO master chef. Are there any questions about Carla's item or fixings? Well, listen, host Chance, I was in my dressing room, and while I was in my dressing room, I cooked up the best cauliflower steak with chimichurri sauce. It is wow. amazing. <laughs> so I can't stay too long with y'all. I've got to go and eat, but okay, I'll go ahead. Let's see, Carla, let's see what we have for you. Yeah, we do have a question. All right, let's see. What? Okay, what are some of the projects that the People's Transportation Plan have sent, has funded? Okay. Oh my God, there are so many, and I'm so glad that somebody asked that question because it is a question that a lot of people ask. Um, and for instance, uh, we implemented the golden, and, and you'll hear a little bit about it uh, later, the Golden Passport and Patriot Passport Program, which is helping a lot of people, uh, our senior citizens and those who qualify also use transit for free. We also have free Metro Mover service that's being paid with Surtax funds. Um, the orange line extension that was done to the airport also that was paid with Surtax uh, dollars. Uh, the advancement that we're doing now in our traffic uh, lights, that is also being funded, as well as uh, the whole new flea of new material vehicles, 136 new vehicles, also paid with PT, uh, PTP funds, half cent service tax, and um, new buses. We're also getting new buses, the new Dolphin Park and Ride lot um, that, you, that people are utilizing now, funds went towards that. And very important also, Surtax funds are funding or helping to support uh, the SMART plan. So a lot of the corridors are getting funding from uh, the PTP. And as I mentioned before, also municipalities are using funds to improve transit and uh, public works projects within their city. So a lot, a lot of projects that are being funded. And, and so thank you for allowing us the opportunity to mention at least some of them today. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. There is a lot going on and you yes. all are very busy at the Transportation Trust yes, and we are, are very thankful for that. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent, Carla. Well, host Chance, that's all I have for Carla. Thank you. Awesome, Carla. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. Our next transportation partner is from the Florida Department of Transportation, District 6. Good morning, Oscar. Thank you for joining us this morning. This is your first time on the Taste of Transportation, so welcome. But I know you are no stranger to making presentations. What would you like to place on the menu today? Thank you, host Chance, and thank you everyone for attending. So we have an amazing three-course meal to present today. It includes construction on State Road 836, I-95, and 395, three of the busiest uh, roadways that all converge at an interchange that sees over 450,000 vehicle trips daily. Next slide, please. On I-95, uh, the project limits are from Northwest 8th Street to Northwest 29th Street. The majority of the work here is replacing uh, the existing concrete pavement with new pavement, and uh, we're over 90% complete with that. Next slide. 
On State Road 836, we are adding a second level to State Road 836 for a viaduct to enhance safety, increase capacity, and improve access. The, uh, you see here a rendering of the entrance uh, and exit points uh, just to the east of the toll gantry located near 17th Avenue. Next slide, please. In addition to building this viaduct that will connect folks to I-95 local uh, and for Watson Island, we're also widening the eastbound 836 ramp that takes drivers to northbound I-95. As you know, this is a heavily congested ramp. We're widening it from one lane to two lanes. Next slide, please. Here you see a shot of uh, looking at 836 over the Miami River. You can see how we've removed the center section of State Road 836. This will allow for the construction of the foundations and the piers that will come up through the middle to support the second level. Next slide, please. Next slide. Moving on to State I, I, Interstate 395, just like 836, we're adding capacity and safety and improving access. But here on I-395, we are completely reconstructing the existing roadway and adding an iconic signature bridge that will forever change the Miami skyline. The signature bridge will span a thousand feet over Biscayne Boulevard and Burton Second Avenue. It has six arches with the tallest arch reaching over 300 feet into the air. Next slide, please. By reconstructing I-395, we will be building the bridges at a higher elevation and reducing the number of columns underneath. This will give us the unprecedented opportunity to open up over 30 acres of community spaces in the urban core of downtown Miami. The under deck features will also include a heritage walkway that will connect over town from Northwest Third Avenue all the way to the bay front uh, in downtown. Next slide, please. Here you can see uh, the area uh, near the art center and the museums where we're currently constructing the foundations that will support uh, the arches. In the middle is the main footer for the signature bridge. Next slide. The contractor is also working on segmental bridges that will be the bridges that will connect the signature bridge with I-95 and State Road 836. Here you see one of the erection crews working uh, adjacent to the Brightline uh, rail. Next slide, please. The second segmental erection crew is working in the Overtown area at the intersection of Northwest 3rd Avenue and Northwest 14th Street. Uh, you can see that on the right-hand side, some of the uh, cranes that are used to erect uh, the segments. Next slide, please. I'd like to uh, ask everyone viewing this presentation today to please visit our website, i-395miami.com. We have an animated video that will give you additional information on all the improvements um, that will be part of this magnificent project and also uh, gives you the opportunity to sign up for email alerts so that you can be uh, abreast or kept informed as to what's happening with the project and what kind of lane closures are being implemented to conduct this work. Uh, we also, I want to mention that we also have an outreach office that we just recently reopened. Uh, it is located in Overtown at 1035 Northwest 3rd Avenue, and it is open Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Thank you so much, and I'll take any questions if there are any. Wow, Oscar, talk about a, a a full menu there. You wasn't joking. <laughs> <laughs> really I'm, a great project. I'm full, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> Listen, I know this is your first time here on the show. At this point in time, we go to our TPO Master Chef to see if there's any questions about your item or fix. TPO Master Chef, you have the floor. 
Well, host chance, let me tell you, Oscar, that was a five course meal. Oh, amazing. And the pictures are beautiful. Oh, it's it's uh, it's amazing to see. Born and raised here in Miami. I, I'm just amazed watching this whole area grow and and watching the changes to to this project. Unbelievable. But let's see. Um, let's see what we have. OK, we do have a question. When will this project be fully constructed? Oh, good question. Well, well, Master Chef, the uh, project is scheduled to be completed in the fall of 2024. That's right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> we we will we will be bringing on uh, improvements online as they are completed. Excellent, excellent. So as each segment is completed, then that will come on, and then the full completion is is 2024. Correct. Yeah. For an example, we expect to complete the widening of the eastbound 836 ramp to northbound 95, which I know a lot of drivers will like uh, by this year, by the end of this year. I was going to say that's that's a major choke point. So I'm sure everybody is going to be so excited when those two lanes open up for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Well, Excellent job, Oscar. You always do such a great job uh, keeping the public informed, and thank you for being with us. Host Chance, that's all I have for Oscar. Awesome job, Oscar. Awesome job. Awesome job. Thank, thank you. you. TPO Master Chef, thank you. Let's keep this transportation menu going. Next up, we have from the Florida Turnpike Enterprise. Good afternoon, Yvette. Congratulations to you. You too have also, this is also your seventh straight event with us. Whoop, 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 whoop. What treats would you like to place on the TPO menu today? Well, thank you, host Chance. Um, today, um, I'm going to be talking to you about um, the benefits of SunPass, as he meant, as Host Chance mentioned, my name is Yvette Ruiz Paz. I'm the communications manager for Florida's Turnpike Enterprise. Next slide. What is SunPass? Well, for those who are not familiar with it, SunPass is Florida's prepaid toll program. Right now, there are construction projects underway that are converting many of our state toll roads to electronic no cash tolling. Owning a SunPass provides an easy and convenient way to pay for your tolls. Next slide. Let's talk about the many advantages of owning a SunPass. Besides providing a hassle-free way to pay for your tolls, there are savings as well. SunPass customers always pay the lowest toll amount in Florida, saving an average of 25%. SunPass works on all Florida toll roads, as well as Georgia and North Carolina. You can also use it to pay for parking at major Florida airports and at the Hard Rock Stadium. We offer easy ways to pay and access and manage your account as well. Next slide. There are two types of SunPass transponders available, the Mini and the Portable. Each provides specific benefits. The SunPass Mini is permanently adhered to your windshield and can be only be used on one vehicle, while the SunPass Portable can be taken with you when you travel. And both SunPass options provide SunPass Plus parking as well. Next slide. Opening a SunPass account is a great way to pay for your tolls. Compared to paying using a toll enforcement invoice, you save nearly 25%. You can also receive a $4.99 toll credit when you activate your account. Visit SunPass.com for more information and to convert to a SunPass account. Next slide. In the near future, SunPass will be debuting a new transponder, which will work with EasyPass toll roads in 18 states. We will have more information on that coming in the next few months. Next slide. Thank you all so much for your time today. To learn more about SunPass, you can call our customer service line at 1-888-TOLL-FLA or log on to sunpath.com. Thank you, Yvette. Wow. New SunPath on the way. That is awesome. Coming soon. Information. We gotta bring, we gotta do a whole nother uh, taste of transportation just to bring that back on, right? <laughs> Absolutely.
Well, thank you, Yvette. As you know, you, you're not a stranger to this at all. You know what's going down the pipeline now. We got to hear from our favorite, TPO Master Chef, to see if there's any questions or uh, items about your, I'm sorry, any questions about your fixes or item. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. You have the floor. Listen, Yvette, I think you you got host chance all tongue-tied he's thinking about that new sun pass and he's gonna go and camp out you know how they camp out 24 hours beforehand to get their sun pass see he's already thinking about it but i'm gonna beat him because i'm gonna have the campsite right before him <laughs> all right Yvette, let's see what we have uh we do have a question yes okay. with summer travel just around the corner and that is true do you expect to see any um, uh, continued increase in traffic at the service plazas? Well, Master Chef, we continue to see an increase of customers at our service plazas throughout the state. Um, we are maintaining our practice of increased cleaning, and we also continue to have hand sanitizing stations and social distancing markers in place, as well as touchless payment options available for our customers at all of our Turnpike service plazas. We continue to offer uh, food choices, gasoline, dog walks, and restroom facilities for our customers statewide. Excellent, excellent. And can't, you can't forget about our fur babies, of course, our dogs. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, listen, I think that's all we have. Yep, that's all we have. So thank you, Yvette, for being such a wonderful partner, a transportation partner, Chef. We appreciate you. We appreciate you, period. And um, I guess that's all we have for you. And host Chance, that's, that's what we got. Thank, Thank you. you so much for including Florida's Turnpike and Sun Pass in this great program. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you. And thank you, TPO Master Chef. Next up is the Miami-Dade County Department of Transportation and Public Works, also known as DTPW, is here this afternoon with us. Good afternoon, Mike. And what would you like to place on our special transportation menu this morning? Good afternoon, Ms. Chance, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. Thank you all for having me. Hello, everyone. As Ms. Chance said, my name is Mike, and I'm here on behalf of the Department of Transportation and Public Works program. You may be asking yourself, what is the Golden Passport program? Well, I'll clear that up for you right now. The Golden Passport program is a program that is paid for by the half cent sales, sales surtax that Carlos spoke about earlier. This program, this program will allow for free transportation on Miami-Dade Transit to qualified residents of Miami-Dade County. Now I'll go over the requirements for each of the programs. First program, residents of Dade County that are over the age of five, five, five. you will need to provide by Miami-Dade Miami County, County Florida, Florida ID that has, has my Miami-Dade Miami County physical, physical address, address on it. The, the card will be issued to you and it will be valid for the next 20 years. Next slide. Uh, the next program is for people under the age of 64. Uh, you again need to be a Miami-Dade County resident, um, have a valid Florida ID with a Miami-Dade County physical address on it. You will be needing to be receiving social security benefits and you would have to provide the current year social security benefits letter. This card must be renewed annually and every year you would need to bring updated the uh, requirement. Next slide. Uh, this is for our veterans. This is also a program that is only for Miami-Dade County residents. You must bring your valid Florida ID showing a Miami-Dade County physical address. You also need to provide your DD-214 as proof of honorable discharge. This pass only has an annual income of that cannot exceed $30,721. Um, this card also must be renewed annually, and you must bring up-to-date uh, requirements um, every year. Next slide. You can apply online at www.miamiday.gov forward slash apps forward slash DTPW forward slash DT card services app. Next slide. And some of the benefits for having the Golden Passport is it will provide you free transportation with the mobility, um, with you having mobility throughout the county 
It is valid on all Metro rails and Metro buses and the Metro mover is free for everyone else. Um, and you also get a discount whenever you ride tri-rail, um, the tri-rail system. Thank you. Next slide. Thank you very much and thank you guys for having me. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. Um, as you know, you're a veteran to this as well. We're gonna go right to the TPO Master Chef to see if there's any questions about Mike's item or fixings. Excellent, thank you, Host Chance. Wonderful presentation, Mike. We really appreciate it. Let's see what we have. Okay, uh, how do folks renew their easy card? Well, currently due to the pandemic, all of our offices have been closed and are still closed. We actually have our first office scheduled to reopen at the downtown location on May 20th. Um, but we do recommend and we do advise that we that customers renew via the website that was given to you earlier. You can do that at any time um, because being that we're the only office or the downtown location is going to be the only office open at this time starting May 20th. Um, they are expecting, you know, you know, longer than usual wait times and due to social distancing, um, there are a lot of uh, rules in place as to what a customer would have to do when they went office. Understood, understood. Okay, well, great. So May 20th then is a kind of a key date. Correct, correct. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Mike, thank you so much for always being with us and supporting this program. We appreciate it. And host chance, that's all we have for now. All right. Thank, thank you, Mike. For having me. Thank you for joining us, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. All right, all right, all right. Let's keep this menu on track. No pun intended. As Mike mentioned, our next transportation partner represents the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, also known as Tri-Rail. Good morning, Vincent. What would you like to add to the TPO lunch menu today? Good morning, host Chance. Thanks for having us. Uh, commuter rail is on the menu. Let's uh, get it started. Next slide, please. So for those that don't know, just a little overview. Uh, Tri-Rail is South Florida's commuter rail system. Uh, we connect Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade counties uh, along the west side by 95. Uh, we have 18 stations on the corridor. We've been operating over 31 years. And our headways are uh, peak uh, 20 and 30 minute service and uh, midday service about an hour and uh, weekend service uh, on the hour as well. Next slide. So you might be asking yourself, I've never ridden the train before, I've never commuted on the train before, what are some of the benefits? Um, our service runs every day, uh, 365 days a year. Our fares are targeted at commuters, so they are very affordable and there's a number of uh, discounts that we offer. Uh, free parking at all stations, uh, we connect to all South Florida's international airports. Um, we also have uh, interconnecting bus service, um, all three county bus services uh, connect to our system. Uh, we connect to the Metro Rail, there's also a uh, local uh, trolley circulators that connect to our service as well. So great connections. Um, and also from a commuting standpoint, you're helping reduce your carbon emissions. Uh, you're saving uh, money on gas, car maintenance, tolls and parking. Uh, we have Wi-Fi so you can be productive on board and as well as a smartphone app where you can keep track of alerts and track the train in real time. Next slide. So of course, as all public transit systems and all businesses have been dealing with the pandemic over the last year, uh, we have, have as well. Uh, we're proud to say that we continue to provide service throughout the pandemic, uh, transporting all of South Florida's essential workers. Uh, we are now up to 92% of our regularly scheduled service pre-pandemic, so, so we're almost right back at a full schedule. Uh, we did reinstate our fares. Uh, however, we're continuing to uh, disinfect uh, high, high touch point areas on the corridor, um, at the ticket vending machines, on board the trains, um, and at stations. Uh, we've also added a uh, um, hand sanitizer and dispensers at the stations and on board. And we do still require a mask on board as per federal TSA mandate, uh, which has been extended through September. Next slide. So our big project, uh, this one we're really excited about. Uh, we are gonna be extending our service uh, directly to downtown Miami at Miami Central. Uh, for those that aren't aware, this is the uh, southern terminus of Brightline, but it will also have uh, two tracks for trial service. Uh, the station is constructed, the tracks are built, um, we partnered with a number of local agencies in Miami-Dade County to get it done, uh, some of them on this call that we're very grateful for, um, and we're hoping to launch that service by the end of next year, uh, by the end of this year into next year, so we're getting very close. 
Next slide. Uh, thanks for having us. Be sure to follow us on social media. If you have any follow-up questions, uh, I manage all our socials. So drop us a line there and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vince. I know a lot of people are excited about that new project that's coming up. But that's not for me to ask questions. We have our very own TPO Master Chef. You have uh, the floor. I have the floor. <laughs> you, you have the menu. No, you I have, have the menu. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, host chance. Vince, thank you so much. Um, always great information. We appreciate you and your team supporting us um, through this entire series. Um, let's see. All right, with the new, okay, here it is. With the new Tri-Rail Downtown Miami link, will there be an increase in headways? That's a really good question. I bet the person that asked that might be a Tri-Rail rider. That's a very- You think? Uh, oh, <laughs> I might be uh, one of those. <laughs> maybe. Um, it's a great question. So we are uh, running models and working on that uh, timetable right now. Uh, we haven't finalized anything. And part of that is because, as you know, with the FEC corridor, it won't just be us um, operating on there. You have Brightline and you also have the freight. Uh, Brightline also isn't running right now. So I know they're working on getting a, a, a new schedule up for them and, and launching that. So we have to wait on them to see what their schedule is going to be so we can coordinate. Um, but in terms of the headways, we are looking at uh, potentially in every other train situation where about half of the daily trains that we run uh, will go directly to downtown Miami, the other half uh, directly going to the airport with some other operational tricks up our sleeve to uh, launch a very convenient service. So more to come on that. And uh, like I said, be, be sure to follow us on our social media and uh, subscribe to our newsletter because as soon as we get all that information finalized, uh, our followers will be the first to hear about it. So uh, thank you all for having us. So we we love working with the TPO. Hope to see you guys at some events in person soon. Absolutely. And so excited about the new uh, service down into downtown Miami. I know uh, on a personal note, I know I will be on that service um, as uh, I take transit to and from home to work um, downtown Miami. So very excited, Vince. Couldn't be faster. Can't get yeah. it done fast enough. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Vince, again. And host Chance, that's what I have. All right. Thank you, Vince, again. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. Next up, we have a brief video for you to watch. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video brought to you by the Miami-Dade Parks, Recreation, and Open Spaces. Hi, everyone. I'm Sue Kavalerski, and I run the Bike 305 program for Miami-Dade County. Most of the municipalities here are familiar with Bike 305, but for those who aren't, please let me recap what this initiative is and how we can help municipalities like yours. In 2012, Mayor Carlos Jimenez launched Bike 305 to engage and inform residents about safe cycling practices and encourage them to consider cycling as not only a recreational activity, but also as a way of commuting to work, school, and other destinations. Bike 305 works by partnering with municipalities in training staff and law enforcement to organize community bike rides, provide free bicycle helmets and helmet fittings, and educate residents on the right way and safe way to ride a bicycle, and also where it is legally correct to ride a bicycle. Bike 305 is always available to assist municipalities, events, rides, and other gatherings. One of the goals of Bike 305 is to get residents out of their cars and use a bicycle to get to metro rail stations or bus stops to where they can either park their bikes or travel with them on metro rail cars or buses to their final destinations. Bicycles can be that first or last mile choice for connecting to public transportation. The cities of Aventura and Miami Beach are great examples of how municipalities are planning on-road bike lanes to offer space on-road for residents who are choosing to travel by bicycle. Bike 305 can assist municipalities plan for that kind of bicycle infrastructure. Perhaps one of the silver linings we have seen during the COVID-19 pandemic is a steep increase in bicycling. As a result of closed gyms, spending more time with a family at home, and a safe way to recreate outdoors, bicycle sales have skyrocketed. As more residents are taking to bicycles, now is the time to make sure residents know that cycling can be a true transportation alternative. Bike 305 is here to help you do just that. Thank you.
Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. And our next transportation partner is from the Miami Dade Parks and Eco Adventure. They have a fantastic video for you to watch. So again, sit back, relax, get your popcorn ready. Oh, maybe not, because it is a short video. <laughs> and after the video, you will hear from Fanny. Let's roll the video. Adventure is more than a place. It's also a state of mind. And if your mindset is all about exploring, you'll love the eco-adventures in Miami-Dade County Parks. Go from green paths to blue waterways in a single day, on bikes, kayaks, or by boat, or join a nighttime owl spotting walk. Out here, it's all about freedom and epic wide open room to roam, but also smaller spaces you'll love getting to know. Explore Miami's natural side and seagrass beds and secret mangroves, unspoiled sandy beaches, coastal forests, and rare hammocks. From water, to wildlife, to wonder, find your own eco-adventure and come see Miami a little differently. Well, host chance, I'm out here in our parks in our community garden harvesting for a great adventure. Thank you for having me today. I would like to share some wonderful transportation opportunities that you could take to book your next adventures. Next slide. So Miami Eco Adventures is part of the Miami-Dade County Parks, Recreation and Open Spaces. We are the third largest park system in the nation, but the most diverse from Zoo Miami to marinas, golf courses, a shooting range, Neat Streets Miami, Agricultural Extension with UF and IFAS, and so much more, especially Sprout and Spice Park, which is an ethnobotanical garden and park. So make sure to travel to that park soon. Our mission statement to keep it safe is connecting our community to nature. So Miami Eco Adventures connects you to nature through water activities and land-based activities. Our park system is 50-50 split of natural areas and developed lands, including beautiful parklands and nature areas managed by your Miami-Dade County Parks Department. Every great community has a great park system. Of course, it increases tourism attraction, creates quality of amenities, we invest in our great downtown Miami area. We attract and retain diverse populations, capitalize on the beautiful location we live in, but most importantly, parks protect and preserve natural and historic treasures. And Miami-Dade County Parks has that for you. Miami-Dade County Parks has five nature center and one satellite site. What's great about Miami-Dade County Parks is that you can travel from county line and experience different ecosystems and wonderful eco adventures. For this TPO, visit Arch Creek or Crandon Park, but make time to travel down south to the Redlands and Homestead. We offer hands-on educational programs from Nature Camp. In fact, summer registration is now open for our nature-based camp, including fishing camp and exploration camps at our nature centers. We also offer animal encounters and special programming as well. Adventure programs include community programs that are action driven. Our adventures allow you to become an eco hero on a bike tour, a nature walk, on the waterways, on a boat, or on a kayak. So join one of our community adventures today. We hope that you take your next transportation adventure to an eco adventure park near you. If you have any questions, please stay connected and follow us on social media to book your next adventure. Back to you, host Chance. I gotta go pick some more strawberries. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to book right now. I'm ready to book. <laughs> Listen, we gotta go to our TPO Master Chef to see if there's any questions for Fanny's item or fixings. TPO Master Chef, you have the menu. 
Yeah, I don't want to keep her from going and picking strawberries. Fanny, can you get a couple for me? I, I need that for my dessert. Strawberries and cream. That would be awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, but before you go, hold on, hold on. Let's see, we got a question. Yep, okay, here we go. All right, how can someone volunteer to be part of the hands-on education programs? Ooh, good question. That is a good question, especially heading into our summer camp, which registration is now open, and we do offer virtual summer camp, as well as on-site summer camps at well at our nature center, all following COVID guidelines with a bit of increased capacity. So if you have any children from ages six to 14, make sure to get them on our summer camp adventure. But regarding all of our educational programs, we could do outreaches to your sites. If you have summer camps at your locations, we could bring the adventure to you. Just make sure that you contact us at 305-666-5885. Fantastic, I love it. And so uh, I think Host Chance, we can let Fanny go and, and enjoy the great outdoors. So jealous and get those fresh strawberries. Just remember to get us some Fanny. Host Chance, Thank that's you. all I got. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. The menu board is getting full, everyone, but it looks like we have room for just a couple more. Here is a video from the South Florida Community Services, and after the video, we will hear from our very own Priscilla. Let's roll. If there's one thing the last few months have taught us, it's that we South Floridians know how to adapt to any situation. We've revisited the ways we do business, all the while looking out for each other as members of a common community. Together, we all play a role in keeping South Florida one of the most desirable places in the world. And South Florida Commuter Services, a free program of the Department of Transportation, is doing our part to help commuters find ideal travel options and avoid sitting in traffic. We help businesses set up and improve parking, carpooling, and vanpooling programs. We assist users in the toll exempt use of 95 express lanes, and even offer free or subsidized transit passes to commuters. We also offer comprehensive training on how to maintain productive measures while staff work safely from home. We go the extra mile to share this information with the public through a variety of marketing strategies. So when you run into us at one of our many events, that is, when we can start meeting in person again, Ask us the hard questions. And even though we're working from home for the most part, our friendly staff is still available over the phone and our award-winning website is overflowing with information, resources, and opportunities to help you sign up for the many free benefits our program offers. The people who are the backbone of our local economy are slowly returning to buses and trains. Carpoolers and vampoolers are coordinating schedules again. And those who are going to continue working from home are formalizing those plans with management. Through it all, South Florida Commuter Services is here and ready to help. We look forward to hearing from you. Hi, thank you so much, Host Chance, and good afternoon, everyone. It's definitely bittersweet being here at our last Taste of Transportation, TPA 7. But everything must come to an end. Um, that video that you just watched was a menu of services we offer here at South Florida Commuter Services, and they're all free. They're all funded by FDOT. So on today's last main course, we'll be highlighting our Guarantee Ride Home program, which is dedicated to all commuters who choose to carpool, vanpool, ride transit, bike, walk, um, at least three days a week, either to work or school. And we all know that by choosing not to drive your car, you can find yourself sometimes stranded at work or school. Maybe your carpool left early, or maybe you missed the last train. That's why a Guarantee Ride Home program exists. And the best part about it is that it's completely free. The government would actually pay for six Uber, Lyft, or taxi cab rides home per year in case of an emergency. So if you carpool, vanpool, uh, ride transit, like tri-rail or Miami-Dade transit, um, you, all you have to do is register with us, and you can do that by either going on our website at 1-800-234-RIDE.com or giving us a call at 1-800-234-RIDE-7433. Back to you, Hashans. All right. Thank you, Priscilla. Always for a great presentation. Love that video. 
Let's go right to our TPO master chef and see if there's any questions about your item or fixings. Well, thank you, Host Chance, and thank you, Priscilla. Thank you to South Florida Community Services for always being a partner with us and supporting us and being part of this TPA series of the Taste of Transportation. Thank you very, very much. All right, let's see what we have. Okay, here it is. How do I access my guaranteed ride home vouchers needed for taxi cab rides and or Uber if the Lyft, uh, the Uber Lyft option? <laughs> Thank you, Master Chef. That's a really good question. So to access your guaranteed ride home vouchers, um, you would have to access your profile, your South Florida Commuter Services profile. Um, after you register with us and everything, we send you um, like an email confirmation with all of your information. And um, after that, all you have to do is log in and you can access your vouchers from there. Well, that seems pretty easy. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having us. We, we really appreciate it. And this was so much fun. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank you for being with us. Host Chance, that's what I got. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. Our next transportation partner, and our last but not least, the partner that's going to bring us home is the mm -hmm. South Florida Van Pool. Good afternoon, Natasha. And what would you like to place on our menu today, being our last? item on the menu last but not least host chan so the final item on the menu is van pooling so we're going to talk a little bit uh, about what is van pooling so we'll go right into it on the next slide so essentially what is van pooling so van pool is kind of like a carpool but it's i would think of it as a carpool on steroids uh, because we're providing the vehicle to you so it's a group of four to fifteen people you'll meet at a central location and you're actually using that vehicle to commute to and from your work site now the participants share the driving responsibility so at times if you're the rider and you're not actually behind the wheel you get to sleep you get to listen to a podcast maybe some music uh, or possibly get some work done before you get into the office so the next slide we'll talk about what it is that you get with a van pool um like i mentioned the biggest difference here with as far as a carpool and van pool we provide you we are enterprise um so we're going to provide you with a late model vehicle fully equipped could be a traverse pathfinder transit van um, our program is a month-to-month -month convenience. So this rental is essentially something that you can turn in at any time. You're not tied in into long-term commitment. In addition, we do include the comprehensive insurance. So the liability up to a million dollars and bumper-to-bumper coverage. Um, our vehicles are fully equipped, but also we provide a maintenance program. So that includes any of the, the maintenance on vehicles, such as oil changes, tire rotation. Any of that is 100% taken care of at one of our local national vendors. Um, but most importantly, roadside is included. You know, things happen. Tires, you know, will go out and, and something that needs to be serviced so that you can actually call the 1-800 number for roadside and we'll get that vehicle serviced. But if there's a situation where we need to fix that car, we're just going to swap it out and give you a new vehicle. So near and dear to my heart, what I love to talk about is the savings. Um, you get significant savings by sharing a ride together. So you're going to be covering the cost of gas. You're going to split that among the riders splitting the toll cost, um, splitting you know any maintenance and depreciation that you have on the vehicle. So overall, you're splitting all that co cost together. So in the next slide, we'll um, roll into the next slide. Oh, next one. So the subsidy program. So most people say, hey, well, what does it cost me to join a program? Well, Miami-Dade Transit actually provides a $500 a month subsidy per van pool. Um, in addition, Priscilla just mentioned the guaranteed ride home because you are part of the van pool program, you will qualify for that guaranteed ride home. And most of our companies that we work with provide preferred parking. So in a parking can be a little bit of challenge here in Miami, um, especially in some of our downtown areas, Miami Beach. Uh, most of the companies that we work with actually provide a specific spot for you to park your van pool. So that'll save time when you're coming into work. Next slide. Now, as far as our COVID-19 response, um, because we are mandated by the federal uh, policy for the mask, masks are required on our ride, ride share uh, van pool program. Um, in addition, when you sign up for a van pool, we are providing kind of safety measures in order to make sure that you keep the vehicle clean. So we will provide you a, a box of disinfectants, masks, gloves, um, a, a pod that is kind of a disinfectant pod. So we want to give you everything that you need to keep that vehicle safe and to keep everybody in the vehicle safe itself. So we'll give you those measures in place. 
So how do you join? Um, real simple, head on over to commutewithenterprise.com, click on join commute, a couple different options. We'll quickly, we'll go over, you know, if you're just looking to join a van pool and you maybe want to get a ride um, at an existing van pool, you'll click on just me. Me and my friends is if you have a group of coworkers, maybe you're already carpooling and you want to explore this option, you click on me and my friends and I'll be in contact with you to give you the cost and estimate on, on the vehicle. Now, if you are a, in a leadership position, HR, director of operations, and you want to bring this to your employer, um, click on employer, provide me some information about the company and we will connect. We have a customized program for our employers. So get in contact with me and we'll go over all uh, the specific it takes to actually have a van pool program at your facility. So the next slide is going to talk about if you're looking for a van pool itself. Now we're going to give you a couple different options, a couple different routes that are available. So we'll give you five or six options and routes and schedules um, depending on what you uh, want to jump in a van pool. That'll give you some options right there. So just provide me your information and I'll be in touch with you and give you all the specific details. Most importantly, on the next slide, has my information. Reach out, don't hesitate, call me, send me an email. We are trying to provide you another alternative option for transportation. Reduce your carbon footprint by taking some single occupancy vehicles off the roadway. And thank you so much again for having me, Host Chance. Natasha, thank you. And I want to thank uh, the attendees that's holding on right now. I know it's after their lunch period time, but we want to thank y'all for still hanging in there with us. Right now, we're going to go right into any questions from TPO Master Chef. You have the menu. Oh, thank you, Host Chance. And thank you, Natasha. Natasha, again, thank you so much for being part of this series. The Van Pool program is such an important part of the whole transportation system. And we really appreciate everything you do for the South Florida, Southeast Florida commuters. Um, we do have a question. I think you already pretty much answered it, but you know, I'm going to ask it again. Uh, what is the monthly cost based on? Yeah, very important question. And I kind of went over it a little bit, but um, what we're going to look at is what type of vehicle you choose, obviously, depending on the number of passengers that you may have in the van pool, um, your route, so how many miles you're driving. And that's the main aspects that go into it. Um, of course, if there's any tolls or anything like that or any parking considerations, uh, we'll give you kind of a broad estimate overall. But essentially, it's the type of vehicle and the miles driven. Excellent. Thank you, Natasha, so much. That's such important information. And yes, we encourage everyone to get in touch with Natasha to get into a van pool. Host Chance, that's what I have for you. Thank you so much, Natasha. And I want to thank you, TPO Master Chef, for those questions. I don't think we have room for any more items on this TPO lunch menu. The transportation menu board is completely full. I want to take this time to thank all of our transportation partners, aka transportation chefs, that served up all kinds of dishes during this successful lunch series focusing on the TPA areas. I'd also hey, like host, to thank. Oh, go ahead, host Chance. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Continue, uh, and then I'll interrupt you. <laughs> uh. I would also like to thank all of the TPO staff and everybody behind the scenes. And go ahead. Uh, anybody else at the beginning? Oh, host Chance, you stole my thunder. I wanted to thank specifically one person on our team, Miss Regina Serrano. She has been behind the scenes, um, helping with the scripts and helping get organized and helping host Chance to be the best host he can be. So thank you, Regina. She's not always uh, not on with us, but she is there supporting us in the TPO staff. So thank you. And host Chance, uh, you got it again. There you go. Thank you, thank you. Once again, you see me, but no, it's a complete team effort behind the scenes. I'm just here as a face. <laughs> All right, y'all, so let's get ready to, wait, wait a minute, I'm getting a message here. Oh, wait a minute, I'm getting a lot of messages. That's right, that's right. We have the unveiling of the TPO Master Chef. Drum roll, please. Everyone, join me in finally welcoming the TPO Master Chef. 
Ta-da! <laughs> yep, that's me in all my glory. That is the master chef. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We unveiled the master chef. Everyone, everyone. I know, calm down, calm down, everybody. All right, all right, all right. If you enjoyed this Taste of Transportation series for TPAs as much as I did, share with your friends, family, and coworkers as they are all available on the TPO YouTube channel. Have a great afternoon, everyone. It's been a pleasure.